Hi guys and welcome back to Drayson Gaming for another comprehensive Dota Underlords guide. This time we'll be focusing in on the Knights Alliance, one of the strongest role builds in the game if you can hit it and that's why I'm starting with this one after we follow up on my role builds guide. The link is down in the description below and you should probably check that one out if you haven't seen it already because it does cover a lot of the terminology and fundamentals that we'll be building on in this guide. So go take a look and then come back and check this one out as well. Okay, so what are, what are knights and how do they work? Well, knights are incredibly durable frontline pieces um, in general. That's their sort of main focus. They reduce the amount of incoming damage by a percentage and they double that percentage whenever they are adjacent to another knight. So two knights next to each other have a large percentage damage mitigation. And so... What we want to do is to take advantage of that very durable frontline shell and then apply some different um, sources of damage uh, in the back line to really uh, close out the game and the rounds. And so that's how Knights functions. It is um, very strong in the sense that it naturally contains already one of the strongest damage carries in the game, namely Luna and a troll, namely Batrider. So without much addition, you can add in the Troll Alliance, one of the strongest, and then that will buff up Luna, who's already there and incredibly strong. And you have a demon in the form of Chaos Knight, and we quite often leverage that fact to add in things like Legion Commander, Spectre, maybe even Terror Blade. Um, so you have these sort of various demon carry options, which are often uncontested. Also because of the damage mitigation they scale incredibly well with health and healing items um, and effects so anything with health and healing um, is rather good in knights as we will cover later on uh, in the guide so why should we play knights well i would sort of boil that down to four reasons one is they have a very strong early game second only to shamans really so Knights are one of the only builds other than Shamans that can compete in the early game for um, completing win streaks. You can reasonably, um, commonly, complete a win streak with a Knight's build so long as you don't miss horribly. The Chaos Knight, Dazzle, Bat combination very early on is just very, very strong. And Chaos Knight is an incredibly strong early piece in terms of value, hit points, Demon Alliance, and so on. And the Troll Alliance, along with Bat Rider and his oil stacks, uh, are really, really good early on. And you can stack multiple bats on the board to uh, really ramp up that oil damage and, uh, and give you those early win streaks. So early game very strong you keep your health nice and high and for those of you who maybe aren't so keen or confident with builds that involve you taking a lot of damage early on knights could be great for you they have a relatively simple path progression so knights aren't so similar to my brute poison build if you've not seen that one go and check it out description down below but the that, that's more of a level build with a lot of different uh, avenues and paths and ways that you can go depending on what shows up in your shop because of its nature as a role build and because of the nature of how many core pieces are involved in the build you very often go down quite a strict path now as you get better and as you play the build more you will be able to open it up a little bit but as you get started you'll find that knights have a sort of almost joyously simple path progression uh, in terms of what you're going for and that can take one thing off your plate you know you're trying to sort of learn the game you're trying to uh, improve or rank up and you're, you're trying to balance your economy and maybe you're trying to learn overflowing or any of the other techniques and so your brain is full of all these things and you don't want to have to also be thinking about oh but could I take that thing that's just shown up in my shop is that good if you have a very very simple path progression then you don't necessarily uh, need to worry about that so knights can be good for keeping things simple Additionally, knights are probably the strongest roll build in the game when they hit hard. So when you hit all of your pieces and you get to three star most of them, knights will be pretty much any build in the game. It's close in the end game between some of the very, very strongest builds, but knights are right up there. So in my opinion, knights the strongest roll build in the game when they hit. And... Um, 
Additionally, it's they're one of the few builds that allow for quite a bit of flair, a bit of personal touch to which Underlord you choose. I think that there are four perfectly viable Underlords and two other Underlords that I wouldn't judge you for using. The only one that you wouldn't use are the two varieties of Jull. Jull in Knights is uh, very counterintuitive because um, they provide a durable frontline shell uh, and so does he. So he's providing something that they already have. Um, so that's why he doesn't work out so well. But uh, any of the others are pretty much viable. I will discuss it in much more detail later on in the guide. So in terms of weaknesses, things to look out for, things to worry about, well, um, the first and most obvious in a way is that it is a roll build. So in any roll build, there will be an amount of variance and you will sometimes just be sitting on eight out of nine and not be able to hit your three stars and you die. So you've got to be careful of that. Speaking of variants, knights combine very, very well with, um, with the right items. So if you get particularly good items and you have these really strong pieces to combine them with, you get a lot of value. But the problem is that when you miss those items, you, you sort of miss that value that you do need. So um, item RNG sort of adds a little bit more variance to the build and um, is something that you sort of have to w watch out for and be aware of and maybe adjust your play style based on the items you're getting. In other words, am I going for first this time or have I hit really awful items and I'm just looking to solidify that third, fourth place and move on to the next lobby? That's, um, that's something that you might want to consider later on. Again, I will cover the items in detail uh, later on in the guide. With any build like Warriors, for example, that rely on very tanky high HP units, usually three stars, um, Knights does suffer from Caden's Blade. So Caden's Blade is going to be one of the big things that you need to worry about. Now, there are some positioning tips and tricks, and we will cover those towards the end of the guide, but the the Cadence Blade will always be a thorn in your side, and so if you see that it's very, very much a Hunter Heartless lobby, you might struggle uh, because at least one or two of them are going to hit Medusa Cadence, and it's going to cause you some issues in the late game. But if, for example, you're playing in any format that restricts Cadence Blade in any way, then um, keep it in mind that that is a real, real boon for the Knights, and um, you should definitely sort of rate Knights higher in those sort of environments. The last thing, and maybe the most important weakness of knights, is that they are absolutely horrible when contested. Again, I spoke about contesting in the role build guide and um, things that you can do about it, but if knights are contested, there are just too many core pieces to a knight's build that will be shared. In a build like mages, where there are different paths and routes that you can go. One person can play roll mages, another one can play spirit mages, another one can play human dragon mages. Like there's enough room within the alliance for several people to operate. Same goes for Hunter Heartless for Brute Poison. It's not the case with knights. You simply need uh, certain core pieces, usually Luna, Chaos Knight, Omni Knight, and Bat Rider. And... If you can't three-star them, which is significantly less likely when contested, then you will end up probably bottom four, and uh, quite often even worse than that. So the, uh, the key when playing knights is to have some ideas about where you can bail out of knights. We spoke about bailing out in the role build guide. And I will give you two of the most common types of bailout that I use when playing knights. I think it's very important to have those in mind because whenever you go into knights, you have to be aware that sometimes a less experienced player who maybe doesn't realize that knights are so horrendous when contested will voluntarily jump in and hold hands with you on knights. And that is the worst thing that can possibly happen when you are playing Knights. So keep a very close eye on the uh, on the tab scoreboard. Uh, make sure that nobody's jumping in with you, and uh, and if they're not, well, then you can enjoy the wonder that is roll knights. A quick word about um, level knights. Everybody. <laughs> Pretty much everybody that I know wants to make level knights work. We've all gone, oh yeah, but you could add in the four trolls and the dragon knight and the troll warlord and then your knight shell. No, no, just doesn't work. No, no, stop. Roll. So, 
The contents for this guide then. What we're going to do, we're going to cover three variants of the Knight's build. The standard one, the one where you sort of focus a little bit more on the early game, and the one where that doesn't work necessarily, and we need to move sort of a little bit faster into the mid game um, and focus on that. So those are the three variants. We'll go through them in detail shortly. Then I'm going to be doing my item guide for Knights covering each tier by tier and your sort of core items, your acceptable items, and then you can assume that everything else should be avoided. And after that, we'll cover the Underlords Guide. So going through the four Underlords that I think are most viable in Knights and why. And at the end, we'll cover the positioning of Knights and the way that I like to play them. Of course, there are multiple ways to play them, but this is the way that I use. And we'll go through, have a look at the Build Creator uh, website and use that to uh, take a look at some positioning options. So the variant that we've all been waiting for, the standard Knights build. Let's dive straight in. This one is assuming that you are uncontested and that you hit the various things that you want. So this is sort of your ideal world. And from here, we will look at the various things that you can do when that ideal world doesn't come to be, um, which is pretty, pretty regular, to be honest. <laughs> so you're going to open up with Chaos Knight, Bat Rider, and Dazzle. Those are your three key indicators in the very early game that this might be a Knights game. Uh, good news is that you can and in fact want to have multiple um, of single one-star pieces. So for example having two one-star bats on the board while in most cases having two of a single thing is sort of just denying yourself an additional alliance, in the knight's case it sort of is an additional alliance. Having two bat riders stacks, so each one benefits from the oil stacks of the other. Having two chaos knights um, works as well because they are just incredibly strong early game pieces. Their health uh, stats and their demon alliance and so on just make them and their stun, their ability, it's just really really good. So Chaos Knight and Bat, you can pretty put, much put as many of those as you find on the board. Obviously if you two style them great, you've got an additional spot to put something else on. Maybe get an alliance in, maybe just have an additional um, copy of the things you already have. The only one that I wouldn't necessarily double up on is Dazzle. Dazzle is there just to provide the Troll Alliance in combination with Batrider, but he's, um, he, he isn't really the strongest body in his own right. After that, you will be looking to add in um, Luna. Uh, Luna 1 star is only really good in the first few rounds. After that, she drops off very quickly, but then she storms ahead when she becomes a 2 star. So Luna 2 star, one of the biggest damage output pieces that you will have for a big section of the game, and she's something that you are most definitely looking for, and she has some of the best item synergy uh, in the game. So Luna, very, very important, and you do want to find that 2 star. But in the first few rounds, your major concern is Chaos Knight, Batrider, and Dazzle. Later, you will then be adding in the Omni Knight. So Omni Knight will be your healer very often in combination with Dazzle, especially important if you're going for the Heal and Steal Eno or the Summon Golem Anessix, because obviously Healer Alliance combined with a Healing Underlord is good. But just in general, having uh, the Healer and Troll Alliances from Batrider, Dazzle and Omni Knight is a cool little threesome. You will then be looking to add in demon carries. So generally speaking, knights in the current meta, the way that most people play them in terms of role builds, is to add in some sort of demon carry. Now, interestingly, Legion Commander is a very, very good uh, demon carry in the fact that she takes the demon alliance from Chaos Knight and runs with it. She will also become a knight, and she will benefit from the fact that even with a low number of pieces, in a knight's build, you will have several alliances. You'll have the knight's alliance, you'll have the demon alliance, you'll have the troll's alliance, you'll usually have the healer alliance, and quite quickly, if you have Legion Commander and Omni Knight, you will also have the Human Alliance. So you can see that very, very quickly she gets a lot of alliances. Um, she is particularly able to take advantage of the Demon Alliance and the Knights Alliance to be very tanky. She gives you another adjacency piece that you wouldn't normally have in a Knights build. And she has the benefit of being a two cost. Why is that good? Well, because you're already rolling for Chaos Knight and Luna on two, and now if you're also rolling for Legion Commander, and you could theoretically find more Batriders or Dazzles, then you have this sort of area around level five where you have such incredibly high roll down value. So, those are the pieces you're looking for early. Bat, 
Dazzle, Chaos Knight, Luna, Legion Commander. Those are your first five pieces. After that, you're going to be adding in Omni Knight and Spectre. And that will be basically the end of your build. You will finish the game usually on level 7. You will ignore completely the existence of tier 4 and 5 very regularly. And your final build will be as many of those in 3 star as you possibly can. And in the standard variant of the build, the only two that you're not really looking to 3 star are Batrider and Dazzle. We'll come on to variants that do that, but in this one, in the sort of main standard build, you want to two-star your Bat, two-star your Dazzle, and then three-star everything else. Why is this so strong? Well, you, you have the three demons. You have the Legion Commander, the Spectre, and the Chaos Knight, so you've already got three demons. If you play a version of a Nessix, which you very often will, you will have four or even five demons. That is a hell of a lot um, to have in a legitimate build. People have tried to go with demon builds. They used to be popular, not so much in the current meta, but in Knights, they really, really work because you've got the time um, with your very durable front line. You've got the time for one demon to activate, silence the rest, but they stay alive. Then the other demon activates silences the rest stays alive takes advantage of that enormous damage output and doesn't just get all of your other demons immediately killed now you do need to be careful with positioning but the core is incredibly strong spectre three star is one of the stronger carries in the entire game and if she has five demons on her side she is brutal again a bit item dependent but um that's the name of the game Legion Commander is a very scalable piece. Her dual damage gets going early on, and as long as you can keep her well supported, give her a decent item, and then make her into a three star, she also becomes an absolute monster of a carry in the late game. It's rare that she works, but in Knights, she really, really shines. So, when do we roll? That is always the important question in any roll build, and in this one, this is how we do it. So we're going to grab, as I mentioned, our Chaos Knight, our Batrider, our Dazzle in the early game, any combination or number or multiplication of those pieces. We're going to be trying to get a win streak because economy is very, very important and loss streaking with Knights is usually not the way forward, especially since you have that advantage of being so strong in the early game. You're going to be looking to um, simply get your gold up to 30 and continue your win streak one of the best ways to do that will be to level up at one point fairly early on. So when you see that you are uh, in a win streak, you will need to protect that win streak by leveling up and adding in an, addi an additional piece. Preferably, that will be either an additional Batrider, an additional Chaos Knight, or adding in um, an Alliance benefit. So if you can get four Knights on board, for example, relatively early on, that is incredibly strong. You would even sort of bench the Dazzle for a bit if you got lucky and found an Omni Knight um, relatively early. Then, with your win streak hopefully well underway, you will get your gold up to 30 and you will stay on or above 30 gold for a while. Um, you're going to use that gold wisely to pre-level. Um, in other words, yeah, as I mentioned in the roll build guide, pre-leveling. So spending your gold when you will then be 1 XP short of leveling up. And as the round rolls to the next round, you'll automatically get that 1 XP, level up, and then a new shop will be offered to you. So this is when you get to level 5, and this is the really important stage of a Knight's build, level 5. Level 5 gives you the highest percentage chance, as we mentioned in the other guide, to hit uh, tier 2, tier 2 pieces. And in Knight's tier 2 are rather similar to Brawny's, very, very, very key. So you've got Luna, Chaos Knight, and Legion Commander. And additionally, this is going to be your sort of last chance to hit your bat and dazzle if you didn't. It's going to be your last good chance. Of course, you can always hit them, but at level 5, you have a reasonable chance to hit tier 1 pieces, and so you've got that chance to either um, manage to hit your 2 stars, or if you had a really lucky early game and you hit a real a ton of bats or dazzles, then maybe you could even find a 3 star or decide to stay on 5 for longer. We'll come on to that. That's a different variant. So, uh, we go to 5, and we stay at or above 30 gold. We start rolling down until our bench is full of those pieces that we're looking for. So, our CK, Legion, and Luna. Of course, we are going to hold on to Omnis and Spectres. But, for now, the, the important things are the two costs. In particular, you want to get as quick progress on Luna and Legion Commander as possible, because... 
Le uh, Legion Commander will scale, so the faster that you level her up and get the three star on, the faster she will uh, get that higher dual damage and really be very, very likely to win those duels. And Luna, because she will keep your health pool very, very healthy. The faster that you three star Luna, that is a huge, huge power spike, and that will keep your health good and high while you try to find the rest of your pieces. So, staying on five. Now, you will, at some stage, while you're rolling down, first of all, one of two things will happen. One, your bench will fill, and you will be sitting there with, you know, an Omni or two Omnis and a Spectre and a two-star Chaos Knight on the bench and another Chaos Knight, so you're seven out of nine, and maybe you're seven out of nine on Luna as well, and suddenly your bench is full. And But you've still not found any three stars, and you're, you've got nothing on eight out of nine. You're sort of sitting on seven, seven, and, and a bit of stuff. This is where you're going to need to make a decision. And it's probably the most important decision you're going to make. And that is, do I need to go here to six? So am I already at the point where I'm a little bit weak and I'm starting to lose some rounds, or I think I'm going to start losing rounds really hard really soon? This is something that you'll learn with time, but generally speaking... It's deciding, right, can I now roll down hard and try and hit my three stars? Or do I need to uh, level up to six, put one of these two stars that's on my bench on the board to give myself more board power, give, buy myself some more time. Uh, but I know that it will very slightly lower my chances of finding these tier twos that I need. It will also, though, increase the chances of finding the Omni and Spectre. So if you think that you need... For example, to you've got Omni and Spectre paired, then going to six might be the best play because you're going to need to two star those. You don't want to throw away the value, but at the same time, you um, you want to increase your chances of finding them. You need to clear the bench space. It's, it's this is the sort of decision point and the complicated part of the knight's build. If things are going well and you have time and your health is high and you're maybe even still on a win streak, then you want to roll down very, very hard and find one three star. Once you've found a three star, you can allow your economy to build back up and get back up to 30 and then allow, you know, sort of roll down staying on 30 gold until your bench fills up again. And then you need to make exactly the same decision again. Right. OK, I've got that one three star, but is that still enough to keep me healthy and alive at this point? Can I afford to roll down and go looking for the other ones or do I need to now go to six? So it's this same uh, question and decision point again. Once you've decided, you either roll down like hell, find another three star, and then you will need to go to six. After your second three star, you've no longer got enough roll down value because there's not enough stuff that you want to hit at that low point anymore. We now need to get Omni Knight and Spectre within our roll range. So once you've hit your second three star, you want to level up to six. If you haven't already, you may have done. That's fine. Rolling down on five for an extended period only normally happens when the game is going really, really well for you. It's more common that you're, you won't be quite that strong. You will need to go to six and your rolling down in this manner will happen on six. These decision points will happen on six, which is fine. Just slightly less good than if you're able to do it on five healthily. Once you've done it, once you've got your two three stars, then it's time to go to seven. The reason is that on seven, you've got your highest chance that you will ever have of hitting three tier pieces, and you do need to three star them. They are your win condition. So Spectre and Omni Knight, two of the strongest three stars in the game, and you are going to want to, uh, to hit them both. It also doesn't give you the worst chances of finding your remaining tier twos, whichever one you didn't already hit. So while you're rolling on seven, you will still be collecting Luna, CK, Legion Commander, whichever one you uh, weren't quite able to three star just yet. And then from there, you're going to be making the decision point each round of right. I want to be in an ideal world on 30 or above gold, rolling down when I have a good blacklist. Again, if you haven't heard of the term blacklisting, go and check out the roll build guide in the description below. So when you have a good blacklist for the pieces that you want, which is usually three costs and maybe some two costs, then you take those rolls. When you've got a terrible blacklist, if you have the health and time, you wait for a better one and you're rolling down as efficiently as you can to find your three stars. However, sometimes you will reach the point where either your bench is full or your board is too weak and then you will have to roll down hard again. So that is the common theme in this build. It's knowing when and um, and being able to roll down hard and fast when you need to, when you're in trouble, and identifying 
when that is. When are you in trouble? That will come with time, but um, it should be fairly obvious because you'll either be winning rounds or you won't. So that is the standard variant of knights. That is the way that I would play if all goes well, um, or if all goes as normal. If something else happens, well, then you have to sort of, you know, vary your play a little bit. That's the main part of Underlords, and you need to be uh, flexible and adaptable. So let's talk about one of the ways that that might happen. So variant two, the Bat Dazzle variant, the sort of early game variant. This used to be more popular than it is now, but some people do still swear by it. And I certainly don't think it's particularly weak. I just don't think it's as strong as the standard variant. This is where you will hit fairly hard, and it is quite RNG related. It's simply how many bats and dazzles do you hit in the early game, and are you missing Legion Commander? So if during levels 3, 4, and moving into 5, you, but most especially 3 and 4, because that's your highest chance to find tier 1 pieces, if during those, tier, uh, during those levels you find a significant number of bats or dazzles. And by significant, I mean, I would say at least five, In for me, six. I think once you've hit six of either bat or dazzle, then you should be considering this variant. I don't mean committing to it, I mean considering it. So you then want to have a look at the scoreboard. Now, the problem is that the Troll Alliance is probably the strongest support alliance in the game at the moment. And so it is always heavily contested at high MMR. At your MMR, it's possible that it won't be. So have a look at the scoreboard, do your necessary scouting, and check how contested whichever one you found lots of is. Now, Batrider is the stronger three-star in my opinion, though three-star Dazzle is also incredibly strong because of his, um, his sort of shallow grave that he gets, um, which allows things around him to survive an additional five seconds after they take a fatal uh, blow. So... Um, the three star on Bat Rider is more based around consistent damage, but the advantage of a three star Bat Rider is actually, strangely, more connected with the Necronomicon item, which is that Bat Rider is one of the strongest holders of that item in the game. And if he's a three star, he's much more durable. He's going to live much, much longer. He won't get accidentally burst down quite so often or just picked off. And his, um, his sustained damage in combination with his three star oil burning uh, its victims and the Necronomicon holder being one of the best and living for the whole round uh, is just incredibly strong. So the three-star bat is um, is very, very good. And an additional reason why three-star bat is so good is that the build-up to three-star bat involves having two two-star bat riders. And there are not many heroes in the game that really take advantage of that, but bat rider is one of them. Again, his oils stack, and when you've got two two-star bats, they can do really... Uh, astonishingly high damage considering they're a tier one unit so you open the game you're playing your standard uh standard knights variant you hit your early game your bats your ck's your dazzle maybe your luna you uh, get onto a, a win streak of some sort or maybe maybe not maybe you're just sort of win loss win loss mm, okay but you start to hit a lot of bats a lot of dazzles you check your scoreboard if they are not horribly contested be aware they usually will be but if they're not horribly contested then you can consider rolling down on four. And I don't mean rolling down to zero just yet. I mean staying at 30 gold and instead of going to level five, taking those rolls, taking the good blacklists, again, checking that you've got your one costs up top because that's what you're looking for, taking the good blacklists, waiting for the bad ones, and um, trying to get two two-star bats or two two-star dazzles um, as quickly as you can. And then eventually you are going to hit the same decision point that we hit in the standard variant which is mm, i'm now too weak i need to roll you're going to roll all the way down spend down to zero if you have to and try to find your three stars after that you will uh, build your economy back up and you will essentially then follow the standard variant of knights except this build basically skips legion commander because the timing of the build means that you won't get Legion Commander early enough, probably. If you do get Legion Commander early enough, you are probably better going for the standard variant of Knights. So if you do find a two-star Legion early on, then you should not go for this build most likely. Unless you are hitting a two-star Legion and seven bats, then obviously you 
go for it. But generally speaking, if you hit the Legion, you will not do this variant. If you don't hit the Legion, then it will be too late to add her in afterwards. You won't get her scaled up enough. Her dual damage won't go high enough. You'll be too late to find the three star to build that back up. And your early game strength would be better spent trying to find your Luna, CK, Omni, Spectre. So in this variant, we skip Legion Commander. After that, though, the build is essentially the same. We're going to level up and go through the same progression path. However, we will, once we reach level 7, have an additional flex slot. So that spot where Legion Commander would have been uh, is no longer. So we've got this one flex slot, and that gives us some interesting options. So let's talk about those. For that flex slot, I would suggest... One of the following. First of all, um, Shadow Shaman is a decent pick. He will take advantage of your already existing Troll Alliance, and he is one of the stronger Tier 3 pieces in the game. You can't really be rolling down much for anything above Tier 3, so we want to look at our best Tier 3 options, so that while we're sitting on 7 and rolling down for the Omni and the Spectre, we've also got some more roll down value in terms of trying to find a 2-star, or if we're incredibly lucky, a 3-star of another piece that's really strong and would add value to the board. So, um, in my I, in my opinion, that would be Shadow Shaman, Lycan, um, or and I've seen this done, but I don't do it very much myself. A Terror Blade. Now you don't get the Hunter benefit, which is really bad, but you will have a load of demons. Um, you, you'll be one short. You won't have the Legion Commander, but you will have Chaos Knight. You will have uh, Spectre, and you will possibly have one from an Essex. So if you are going with an Anessix build, uh, then you will probably be adding in, uh, well, not probably, you could add in a Terror Blade as this additional flex slot. Theoretically, you can go with stuff like Lifestealer, Alchemist, um, any of these sort of grunt build tier three strong three stars, uh, you can add in into your seventh flex slot. Or you can go with a Baden. Now, a Baden is a very, very tanky uh, frontline piece, but he, he adds very, very little damage. He adds very little impact to the board other than living a long time. So a Baden is one that I normally wouldn't recommend putting in. He's quite a weak knight overall until he hits three star. So if you hit a bunch of a Badens, then you can theoretically put him in because his silence effect on multiple hits of his three star ability is pretty strong, pretty decent, and he is a very, very tanky boy. Having the Abaddon is very useful because you are, in a way, investing more into the Knight's Alliance, which you've already done by investing more into Bat 3, hopefully, uh, maybe even Bat and Dazzle 3. And so when you invest further into Abaddon, what you essentially do is quite rarely you open up the Knights to going to 8. So in this case, you will usually 3-star your Bat Dazzle move on up and start to try to level up your Luna and CK, then move up and level up your Omni and Spectre and maybe Abaddon. But after that, you've now got the opportunity to go for six Knights, which you don't normally do, but this is where you will, in the sort of end game, in the later parts of your build, you will level up to eight and find Sven. So basically, whenever you are you're rolling down on seven, rolling down on seven, trying to hit your three stars as usual, but occasionally Sven might pop up. When he does, you grab him, and then you've got that option to go to eight at any point, throw in the six Knights, and then you're already invested in Knights, namely your bat that you've taken to three star instead of leaving him on two and you're a badden that you've added into the build instead of legion commander you now add more value on top of that by throwing in the sixth knight and getting um, the full damage mitigation bonus obviously when you combine that with some tanky items on a badden or some necro book on bat rider the effect is quite strong why is this not the standard version of the build well i do think that how heavily contested Batrider and Dazzle R makes this slightly un, uh, cons inconsistent and the fact that the real real strength of the build for me comes from the three star of the Omni, Luna, um, CK and uh, Spectre or Legion or both. Uh, I think that the, the three star bat is more of a nice addition rather than a main focus and therefore I consider this an alternative variant not the main one. 
Okay, so now on to what I would consider the third variant of the build, and this is probably the weaker of the three, but can still be strong in the right circumstances. This is one where you, instead of focusing on the early game or following your standard progression, you're going to have to move ahead to level 7 a bit sooner. Um, and there are a couple of reasons why this can happen. One is if you are contested by somebody who's doing a Bat Dazzle variant, but you are already too committed to knights. And so what you've decided to do is accept that you're probably not going to win this lobby, but you're going to focus on the different knights than the other knights player, and you're just going to try and hold in, get third or fourth, and then move on to the next lobby. Well, this is one way you can do that. If, specifically, they are following a Bat Dazzle variant, then you've got time to level up faster than them, get to six and seven sooner, and start to focus on the Omni Spectre, and hope that uh, they are focusing more on the Bat Dazzle and maybe Legion. If they're not focusing on Legion at all, then you might grab the Legion. You can see how this works. So this is a variant which will essentially follow the usual pattern of Knights, Chaos Knight, Dazzle, CK, early on, Luna, and level up to 5. You will not stay on 5 for very long. So in this build, you will go to 6 earlier. I said there were two reasons why you might do this. One is that you're contested. Two is that during this early game build-up, you are not hitting very hard. So if you simply aren't finding the Legion Commander very quickly, you aren't hitting your um, CK and Luna particularly hard, and you're starting to already lose on board. In other words, you're falling behind and you're not... Um, confident that you're going to hit your three stars before you lose too much health this is a situation where you might move for this style of build which is where you're going to go to six um, earlier so instead of continuing to roll down on five and then eventually rolling down hard to look for your three stars you will in an ideal world find a three star so i think you know, I've spoken with other players about this, and generally speaking, it is agreed that if you don't hit at least one three-star, then your power spike is just too weak, and you will start to fall behind. So you want to find a three-star, but then you're going to go straight to level seven. So you hit one three-star, and then go straight to level seven. So you're not going to roll down anymore. You're going to build your economy back up to 30, and then uh, level up um, as efficiently as possible, get to seven, and then roll down focusing harder, much harder on Omni Knight and on Spectre. Um, obviously, you will still be collecting Lunar and CK, but your focus here is more towards the top end, less towards the bottom end of the build. And because of this you have a couple of choices of focus. So one, if you're hitting a lot of Omni Knights, then it is better to have a healing style of Underlord. Not always, it's not a necessity, but it is um, a particular uh, focus and strength that you can go for. And if you're doing that, then you open up a, an additional door, which is Triumph Protector. So Triumph Protector as a three cost you know, three star potential, you'll be rolling down on seven and you're basically going to stay at seven for the rest of the game. So you're looking to do something like a combination between the Knights build and the Grunt build, looking at just strong, uncontested tier three, three stars. So you're going to have your Knight core, but you're going to add in any of those tier threes that you think might work. Now, some options are Shadow Shaman. So Shadow Shaman at high MMR is almost always highly contested, but always good to scout and if you see that he's not he's an incredibly strong three star piece his hex lasts for an eternity and if you get a refresher orb on him he's in just unbelievably good as well as having excellent alliance bonuses so one thing you can do is swap out your dazzle for a shadow shaman especially if you're not taking a healing underlord if you're running uh, enthrall in essex or let's go crazy hobgun or i don't know all out attack eno or something then you don't necessarily need to have the Healing Alliance, and because in this build you don't need to have the Legion Commander, you can. You can, if you find the Legion Commander, feel free to take it. It still works in this build, no problem. But uh, you don't have to. And so if, you, you, if, you've, if you've not got the Healing uh, Underlord, then you don't necessarily need to have Dazzle. You can switch him out for Shadow Shaman and open up some more options. 
Some of those options are things like Lycan. So Lycan is one of the strongest tier threes in the game. And if you get to seven earlier than most people, if you're leveling up reasonably quickly and then rolling down on seven before the other roll builds catch up, you know, they're still looking at their rolling down on four, five, six. If you've gone up to seven a bit quicker and then you start rolling down hard on seven, you might get enough of a lead on the Lycan count that people won't try to contest you, especially at high MMR where people are scouting more efficiently then people will see that if you've already got five lichens, they're not going to sort of start thinking about um, trying to three-star any lichen. But the problem is that some people will be quite content to just throw a two-star lichen in, and if more than one player does that, your lichen count drops quite a bit. So lichen is one option, very, very strong. If you three-star him, you've got all sorts of item options to make that even stronger, refresher orb being an obvious one. Terra Blade, I've mentioned him before, but he is an option that you can throw in here. I'm not sort of touting him as the best thing to ever happen to Knights, but he is an option, and it is particularly reasonable if you already have Spectre. Spectre and Terra Blade, two of the strongest demon carries in the game. Brutes. Brutes are another thing that you can add in here. So Alchemist. Now again, Alchemist, very strongly contested because of how popular Brute Poison is, as well as Rogues. But if, for some reason, Alchemist is not particularly contested, you can throw him in. Lifestealer and Doom are also two very strong pieces that you can add in. Doom, another very strong demon, though less of a carry, more of a utility. Uh, he is still very strong, has very good stats and an incredibly strong ability. So if you happen to find Doom or a pair of Dooms, you may wish to consider even going to 8 and rolling on 8 instead of 7. Pardon me, still looking for your 3 stars, but... Uh, on, on tier 3, but also now looking for that 2-star Doom. Lifestealer is a very strong 3-star, but once again, often contested. Keep an eye out on what is and isn't contested in your lobby and choose from these tier 3 powerhouses that you have. Another option is to again add in a Abaddon here and go up to 6 Knights, so you're sort of looking to 3-star the Abaddon and genuinely find a Sven um, a bit quicker and add in those that six night shell one very rare option that i don't tend to go for but is viable is to add in the enchantress as well as the treon and then you've got your four healers if you keep dazzle in the build instead of replacing him with shadow shaman so all of these things are possible and these are again when things are not going so well for you so when you are taking some hits early on you're not winning as as much as you would like in the early game and your health is at risk you're going up to seven to be able to put more two stars on the build uh, on the board earlier and to maintain a healthy life total and then from there you're rolling down on seven trying to hit those really powerful three tier three stars that will round out the game for you. You're not usually expecting to come first in a lobby with this variant of the build. This is more protecting yourself against 6th, 7th and 8th place finishes by um, protecting your health total early on, making sure you don't spiral out of control and then focusing more on the tier 3 elements of the build in order to push yourself up the lobby finish position and try to protect your MMR. And that brings us to the end of part one. Part two coming soon, right after I get done with the editing. I just wanted to make sure that we got this straight out to you guys without delay. So enjoy, and I will see you for the next one.